everyone, it's Jennifer from FiberFlux. In this video, we're going to learn how to crochet the Color Flip Dishcloth. This is a really fun dishcloth that's a play on color. We're going to be using some post stitches to create this fun, stitchy texture that we have here. And when you flip the dishcloth, it has a completely different appearance. It has kind of like a classic stripe appearance. And then this side almost looks like, if you've ever sewn before, this looks like uh, it's held together with like a, a running stitch or a back stitch. So it has a really uh, fun little play on texture and color and you can stitch this up in no time really. And I've used two uh, pretty contrasting colors, this deep blue and this bright yellow, which we'll get into that in just a moment. And I've worked a row of each color and um, it's just a fun dish cloth. So the finished piece, now this has no special stitch count, so you can really make this as wide or as small as you'd like it to be. But the finished uh, dishcloth measures about 8 inches by 8 inches, and I've made the height and width about the same. And um, so, you know, you can make yours larger or smaller if you like. It's completely up to you. This is part of our Summer of Dishcloths series on FiberFlux. So all through the month of July and August, I'm going to be sharing a brand new dishcloth pattern. This is one of our dishcloths in the series. The directory, in case you've missed any of them, is down below. You can click on the link and see all the dishcloths. And as I share each one, I will update the directory as well. And also, if you haven't joined our, our Ravelry group, you can hop on there and uh, connect with other makers of the cowl. It's a, a really positive uh, spot where if you're working on the crochet alongs, you can share photos, you can get help. Um, it's just a fun place to hang out if you're working on some of these cowls. If you're on social media, share the hashtag, uh, use the hashtag rather, FiberFluxCowl. And it's been a ton of fun to see all the colors everyone is picking, what everyone is doing, and uh, just, you know, keep sharing those photos. I love them, and um, all of you have been leaving some really nice comments, too, on, on the photos. So without further ado, let's jump right in and crochet this dishcloth. I'm going to walk you through step-by-step step of all the stitches, color changes, etc. Okay, so let's get started. For this project, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a ruler or tape measure is super helpful to measure as you go along. We're going to be using a 5.5 millimeter eye crochet hook for this, just like all the dishcloths in our crochet along. And then also for our yarn, we're going to be using Scrubby Smoothie. Now, if you've been crocheting along with us for a few weeks, you'll notice that we've been using this for all of our dishcloths. And today's colors, um, when you do this, because it's called the Color Flip Dishcloth, we want some high contrast. So I picked a very deep, pretty blue. This is called the Blueberry. It's like a really vibrant kind of indigo, navy color. And then I picked a light, sunshiny yellow. This is called Lemony. So these are... Um, work beautifully together and there's also a lot of contrast there because the stitches are going to um, the front and the back is going to look different and it's a, there's a lot of color play with this dishcloth. So pick something that's high contrast, two colors that you like together a lot. We're going to begin with our starting chain. Now in the written pattern on the FiberFlex blog, the blueberry is called color A and the lemony is called color B, just as a side note. Now obviously you can use any colors you like and you could use some self-striping yarn or variegated yarn for an interesting effect as well. Or more than two colors um, would look very nice too. So wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind that loop, reach in with your hook, bring up the loop and tighten. So we're going to start with a slip knot on our hook. Next we're going to chain 30. So to make a chain, wrap yarn around hook and bring it through the loop. And I'm going to just zoom in a little bit so you can see. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty one, twenty two, twenty three, twenty four. 
25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and 30. Now, there's no special stitch count for this project, so you can really make your starting chain as long or as short as you would like it to be. If your starting chain is a little bit too tight, go up a hook size for the starting chain only, and then you can go back down to the eye hook for the rest of your project. So let's begin row one. Again, this is color A. In the fourth chain from the hook, we're gonna work a double crochet. So the loop on your hook already does not count. So one, two, three, and four. And then to make a double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into the fourth chain, fourth chain from the hook, bring up a loop, you'll have three loops on your hook, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. And then what we're gonna do is work a double crochet in each chain across. So just go right on across those chains, work a double crochet in every single chain all the way across. Okay, so I'm just gonna continue working my double crochets. And when we get to the end of the row, we'll rejoin and I'm gonna show you how to move on to row two. All right, just working that last double crochet in that last chain. So next what we're going to do is move on to the um, back post double crochet row and that's going to be the part where you get that kind of reverse color flip look. And then we're going to grab the second color in the written pattern. This is color B. This is the lemony. And what we're going to do is insert the hook into that stitch where we fastened off bring the new yarn through and just tie it right on. And then we're going to just get those tails out of the way and then reinsert the hook back into the stitch, bring up a loop of the new color and I'll just zoom in so you can see that. And then we're going to chain three. One, two, three, turn your work. And then we're going to work a back post double crochet into each stitch across. So if you're not familiar with that, I'm going to do a few with you and we'll do them nice and slow so you can kind of get a feel for it. So what you want to do, it's like a regular double crochet, it's just where you position your hook that's different. So wrap the yarn around the hook and then Normally, we go into the stitch, so the stitch is that loop at the top, see that little loop at the top there? And then this post is sort of like the column of the double crochet from the previous row. So we're going to go around the column. So wrap your own around hook, and then what you're going to do is take your hook and come in from the back, go over top of that post, wrap your own around hook, bring it back through the way you came, and then you're going to bring that loop up. You'll have three loops on your hook, just like when you're working a regular double crochet. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops on your hook. And then we're going to do the same stitch into the next one, okay? So we'll go nice and slow for a few minutes. Wrap yarn around hook, go around the back, over top, back down, wrap yarn around hook, come back the way you came, bring up a loop, now wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. And you can see, when we get everything straightened out, we're starting to get some of that interplay of color, which makes this dishcloth so pretty to work up. Wrap yarn around hook, going from the back, over, back down, wrap yarn around hook, bring it back through the way you came, three loops are on the hook, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops, okay? So we have three back post double crochets so far. Lots of fun, and if you flip it over, they look a little bit different, okay? So we're just gonna work our back post double crochets all the way across on this row. It's all the way across here, okay? Now, if you're not familiar, if you're just learning how to do the back post double crochets, that's totally fine. Just go nice and slow while you're learning how to make them. 
and then later you can try and pick up speed. But for right now, just go nice and slow if you've never worked these stitches before. Okay, and I purposely chose two kind of high contrast colors to give us the maximum color flip possible. So you can um, go a little bit more subtle if you like. Some of you have stitched up the Everyman scarf as one of my free patterns. That is a similar concept of this dishcloth. And the other neat thing about this dishcloth that we're stitching up is we're creating some ridges in our work. They're uh, all, you know, as you can see, they're decorative, but when you are scrubbing in the kitchen, they have a little bit of um, that texture will give you a little bit of scrubby power too. So we're just working our back post double crochets all the way across here. Now, the ends, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the ends that we're going to have. Now, as you can see, we're only on row two, and we have three ends already. Um, you can weave your ends in as you go along by just holding your tail along the top edge as you work. Um, and I can show you that in the next row. Or um, you can carry your yarn up the side. If you've never done that, let me know in the comments and I can uh, make a video on that to show you how to carry your yarn up the side of your work. So if you would like to see that, um, how that's done, just let me know in the comments and I'll make a video for that as well. So you can weave them in as you go along. You can just save them all for the end and weave them in with a tapestry needle. Or if you like to carry your yarn up the side of your work, um, you can do that as well. Okay, so just go in with those back post double crochets. And I'm just working across the entire row just to show you how that's done, okay? Now you can see we have some fun little stitches here. It almost looks like when you work back post double crochets like this, it almost looks like you have sewn two pieces together with a, a running stitch. And embroidery and sewing the running stitches when you get that classic kind of stitchy sewn together look. Okay, so we're just coming up to the end here. And again, you want to just go nice and slow, especially with cotton yarn. Um, the plies, your hook kind of can sneak in between those plies pretty easily. So just kind of go nice and slow with those post stitches. All right, so we're at the last one here of our row. I'm just going to go right in that last one. I was just talking about the plies, and I caught, I caught a ply back here. There we go. Okay. And then we're going to work a regular double crochet into the turning chain space just to finish off the row. Okay. Whoops. Split my yarn again. Let's try that again. So just work your double crochet into the turning chain space. Okay. Just like that. And it looks really pretty. Okay, so that was row two. For row three, we're going to switch colors again. Now, like I mentioned before, carrying the yarn up the side, weaving the ends in, super helpful for this dishcloth. But for learning purposes right now, I'm just going to show you by cutting the yarn. Insert your hook into that stitch. We're going to start row three. So insert your hook back into that stitch, bring the new yarn through, and tie it on. Now, if you have a way that you prefer to join yarn, rather than cutting and tying, definitely feel free to do that as well. Okay, so we're going to get those tails out of the way for now. Go into the stitch, bring up a loop, and chain three. One, two, three. So row three is super easy. We're just going to work a double crochet in each stitch. Okay, so take your, this, again, this is color A. We're going to just work a double crochet in each stitch. So the reason I called it color flip, if you are starting to see, the back looks different than the front. So I like, um, I like that color flip name because you're getting a totally different appearance on either side. Okay, So I'm just going to work my double crochets all the way across. And then we can see the full effect of what we're doing here. Just 
work those double crochets. Now if you are familiar with double crochets but haven't quite done the post stitches yet, this is a great project to practice on because it's not a huge project and you can just take enough time to master those stitches and then you can put them to work on a larger project later like a scarf or blanket or something like that. Post stitches are once you get going on them they're easy to do they create a ton of texture and they're really pretty to look at. Now this particular pattern doesn't have a front post but a front post double crochet will also give you a lot of pretty texture. It, it sort of looks like the back of this yellow here. It's kind of the because we have a front, uh, excuse me, a back post on the other side. It kind of looks like that on the reverse. So again, I'm just working my double crochet stitches all the way across. And I'm curious if you leave it in the comments below what colors you have chosen for your color flip. Are you doing two colors like me? Are you doing lots of colors and having color flips all over the place? <laughs> or are you doing something that's a little bit more subtle and neutral? I wanted something to be very high contrast for this one so you could really see the effect that we're after here. Black and white would be really fun. Um, you could do, you could even do like shades of one color, like you could do light pink and hot pink or lime green and dark green. All right, I'm just working that last double crochet and then again we're just going to work into the turning chain space to finish off the row. Okay, so let's flip that over and you can see we're starting to get some really interesting effects. And you can see the back has one type of look and the front has another type of look. So again, check out the Everyman scarf. I'll put the link down below for that um, if you want to make a scarf version of this. Anyway, so to finish your dishcloth, you're just going to be repeating rows two and three, two and three, over and over and over again until your dishcloth is about as tall as it is wide, okay? So I'm going to continue working on my dishcloth, and then we're going to rejoin. I'm going to show you how to finish things off, and then um, we will be done our dishcloth, and it looks already, it's looking really pretty. So let's continue working rows two and three over and over again, and we'll rejoin in just a minute. All right, I'm just working that last double crochet of the row. And whoops, and then what we want to do is work the double crochet into the top of that turning chain. Same thing we've been doing. All right, so just work that last stitch. All right, so our dishcloth is complete. So I roughly have made it about the same height and width. You can check that by taking the corner and folding it down. You can see that it makes a triangle with a just very little overhang. Okay, so our dishcloth is complete. I wanted to point out too, to make sure when you're making your dishcloth, to make sure that you end your row on the double crochet stitches because um, it will finish it off a little bit nicer and it'll give it a more complete look. And if you did each row as a different color like I did, um, it'll give you the same color on the bottom and the top. It kind of frames it in. So what we want to do now is fasten off. So I'm just going to cut the yarn, wrap the yarn around the hook, and bring it through the loop. Now this is the back part of the dishcloth. Let's flip it over. And as you can see, actually, I don't even want to call it the back. This is the side with the post stitches. So it looks like, almost like we've sewn it on there. And then the back side, because it's color flip, has a completely different look. So this is a, a really fun, and all these ridges give it a lot of nice texture. The last thing we need to do, now if you did each row as a color like I did, you might have quite a few ends to weave in. That's okay. I went ahead and wove some of those in already, but we have our last end here. And I wanted to point out, so you just want to thread your tapestry needle, and I wanted to point out that when you are weaving in your ends, you want to stay in the same color. So I have this blue, I'm just going to stay in this blue area when I weave in my ends. So just take your end, 
and go into those stitches with your end just like that. Go in one direction, come back in the other direction, and then you can grab your scissors and just trim. Give it a little tug first if you need to. Okay, so our dishcloth is complete. It has a lot of really fun texture and it's uh, a really fun play on color as well. You can see the back looks like just classic stripes, has a very summery kind of nautical look. And if you even look at it this way, it just looks so different every, every which way you look at it. So that is how you crochet the color flip dishcloth. Now, um, like I mentioned before, be sure and if you haven't joined, hop on over to the Ravelry Crochet Along group. That's where you can, I'll put the link down below, but that's where you can share your projects, you can ask questions. It's a wonderful community of makers and it's a very positive um, place to connect with other people who are working on the crochet along. If you're on social media, you can uh, use the hashtag FiberFluxCal and it's been a lot of fun to see all of the different colors and styles and, and which dishcloths people are picking and choosing from. So definitely use that hashtag if you're sharing on social media. And that is it. That is our tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And next week we'll have a new dishcloth. And I um, hope you can join us for that one as well. Thanks so much for watching. And be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest FiberFlux video updates. Thanks again. Thanks.